During the recent Russian-Ukrainian crisis, there has been a lot and some bizarre occurrences now and then. From every company decoding on abandoning Russia to Elon asking Vladimir Putin for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Some of these moments paved the way for a brand new relationship between both the USA and Ukraine, both politically and economically. Before we dive into the topic, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel and receive all of our newest videos. Earlier this month, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky tweeted about a conversation with SpaceX boss Elon Musk, the latter being the one who offered his services to provide the Ukrainian government with a Starlink satellite internet access coverage after an SOS from the Vice Prime Minister. They talked to Elon Musk. I'm grateful to him for supporting Ukraine with words and deeds. Next week, we will receive another batch of Starlink systems for destroyed cities, discuss possible space projects, but I'll talk about this after the war. The Ukrainian president wrote, Musk has been regularly using Twitter to take a stand as Russia wages war on Ukraine. On Saturday, he wrote, Starlink has been told by some governments to block Russian news sources. We will not do so unless at gunpoint. Sorry to be a free speech absolutist. Ukraine has been witnessing a disruption in internet services and supply of essentials with the Kremlin offensive entering the 11th day. All top leaders and citizens, however, have been using social media to update the world about what's happening, their challenges and their resistance. As we saw in the news lately, the Russian government made sure that all access to internet and Twitter and Facebook has been cut and taken down a lot of websites and forums as well as censored some words related to the invasion war coverage. And of course, any additional updates or information about the matter have been labeled with a new fake news according to a newly adopted law. At a time when the West is still trying to find means to stop, you know, I mean, at least try to stop Moscow, Elon Musk on Saturday called for the US to increase oil supplies to reduce Russia's dependence. Interestingly, the billionaire businessman has been an advocate of clean energy. Hate to say it, but we need to increase oil and gas output immediately. Ukrainian President Vladimir spoke to President Joe Biden about the needed efforts to curb Russian aggression against Ukraine after his appeal to allow Ukraine to join the 27-member bloc. His outreach comes as frightening continues in several Ukrainian cities and a huge Russian convoy heads towards the capital, Kyiv. Ukraine's government said a strike, yes, a strike for sure, targeting the capital Kyiv took out a TV tower. Whether it was to hinder the Ukrainians from receiving any news from the outside world is unclear. Meanwhile, Western diplomats and ambassadors walked out of an UN Human Rights Council took a meeting on Tuesday when Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's pre-recorded address began to play. Biden stated that he doesn't do military interventionism for the sake of protecting the USA from any imminent danger. This has something to do with the President Biden's non-interventionist instincts. Granted, they were developing over time. He supported US military action in the 1990s to deal with ethnic conflicts in the Balkans, and he voted for America's ill-fated invasion of Iraq in 2003. But since then, he's become warier of using US military power. He opposed Obama's intervention in Libya as well as surge of troops in Afghanistan. He absolutely, resolutely defends his order to withdraw US forces from Afghanistan last year despite the chaos that accompanied it and the humanitarian catastrophe left in its wake. And his top diplomat, Anthony Blinken, a Biden whisperer, who's crafted the president's foreign policy over some 20 years of working at his side. The American people themselves said that they don't want a war either, with a recent poll found discussing whether the USA should partake in the war, a total amount of 72% of voters said that the US shouldn't take a big stand, but rather a play, you know, minor roles in the Russian-Ukraine conflict or none at all, fearing the consequences of such actions. With the recent inflation, of course, percentage still is going up, something President Biden has to be mindful of as midterm elections loom, and having to respond to war is not an easy task for both the government, the military, and the people. In Washington, the crisis is consuming lawmakers on both sides of the aisle who are demanding the toughest of sanctions on the other side of the spectrum, even the Republican Party is agreeing with Biden's decision. Biden said that he doesn't want to start another uh, world war, of course. By risking a direct clash between American and Russian troops in Ukraine, the US president has been open about his refusal to get involved and stated that it's not like we're gonna, you know, deal with terrorist organizations. The president told NBC earlier this month, we're dealing with one of the largest armies in the world. This is a very difficult situation and things could go crazy quickly. 
with the insane amount of nuclear weapons and highly trained army members, it's safe to assume that Joe Biden's fear stems from the uncertainty of whether the world can survive such a war with the least amount of damage. As far as this war went, there were no propositions over signing a treaty or working things out peacefully. An attack against any NATO country is an attack against all, the foundational Article 5 commitment that binds all members to defend one another. Harvard professor and foreign policy realist Stephen Walt argued that the rejection of compromise by the US and other NATO countries makes no sense, seeing that their unwillingness to put any military muscle behind it seemed rather odd and out of the element. President Biden has been sending troops to Europe and redeploying those whoa, 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 already there to bolster NATO allies and border Ukraine and Russia. This has been built by the administration of an effort to reassure former Soviet republics nervous about Putin's wider goal of pressuring NATO to roll back forces from its eastern flank. If it didn't move into NATO countries, Mr. Biden has said we will all be involved. Matthias Dolfner, the CEO of Insider's parent company, Axel Springer, recently met with Tesla CEO Elon Musk for an interview to discuss that ongoing events and Musk's role in all of this and all these occurring actions. The interview took place in Tesla's factory in Fremont, California, and the men discussed Russia's invasion of Ukraine, space travel, and what makes human beings special. In the interview, the duo talked about the present state of Ukraine and Russia when Matthias expressed his fear and sadness over the massacre Russian troops were committing against the innocents in Ukraine. Elon showed his disappointment in the Russian army, stating it is surprisingly to see that in this day and age, I thought we had some sort of, you know, a moving on kind of a pact for such things for the most part. Dufner goes on to ask his guest to elaborate even more on the situation. Have you been surprised by Putin's behavior? I mean, I remember the discussion in the recent weeks when most of the Europeans thought he is not going to do it. A lot of Americans were convinced that he is not going to invade. But now he is. What was your expectation? It was known that Elon, a man who never fears to voice his opinions, especially after he challenged Putin into a fistfight on Twitter, and while some people saw it as a goofy way to look strong, Elon does express his anger towards the heinous actions taken by the Russian leader. He answers Dupner's question. I think the American government has done more than people may realize. It's not just very public. It is very important to do something serious and we cannot let Putin take over Ukraine. It's crazy. The responses given by both Joe Biden and Elon Musk gained a lot of attention with so many people cheering for them to take action and do something for the Ukrainian people and while others saw this as just a step into, you know, that's being taken for something far more imposing, the plan to stop the war, either way, it is indeed a good thing to see people of importance doing such things. So did you guys enjoy our video? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like and share and subscribe to our channel to get notified of our latest videos. See you next time!